What's going on guys? This is part 2 of our Python control server and today we're going to be implementing encryption on both the server and the client. The library we're going to be using is PyAESCrypt for Python 3 and if you want to install it, you have to go ahead and do Python dash m pip install pi aes script like that uh, let's give it a second here yep i already have it installed and now let's take a look at a demo of what we're going to be working on today so i'm going to run the server and let me run the client here on another computer and yeah howdy let's try out some commands here we're getting the replies back all the traffic is encrypted towards the end of the video i'm gonna show this on wireshark so we can confirm the traffic's encrypted and yeah let's jump into the code all right so here we have the updated code for the server and i've actually made a video explaining a little bit better how to encrypt and decrypt data over the network and I'll put the card above here for people that want to go more in depth on the topic but like usual we start off importing the libraries I believe these are the only two new libraries being imported uh, this is old stuff you know socket configuration listen for one client blah 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 now let's get into the encryption and decryption stuff so what you're looking at on this screen is basically all the new code that's being introduced today and this is both the same code on the server and the client so let's take a look at it we go ahead and set a buffer size of 1024 bytes which matches with the amount of data we're receiving and then you also have to set a password and notice that this password needs to be the same on the server and the client and of course we're gonna want to create a function to encrypt the data and decrypt the data so that we don't have to be manually running this code every time we're doing this process right so we start off by encoding the string message we receive on the function then we convert it into a bytes IO object and this is going to be our input data on the encrypt stream so we also need to create an empty bytes IO object to be the output which is going to be the actual encrypted data and this is the main function that encrypts the data so you're going to notice we also need to pass it a password and the buffer size then we simply get the value from the encrypted data and you're gonna want to return that encrypted data from the function and that's so we can just call the function like this inside of the socket send function which just makes the whole thing a lot easier right now on to decrypting it's basically the opposite process we're going to create two blank bytes io object then we're going to convert the input data from the message we pass the function we also need to get the length and they're very specific that the length must match so if you pass the wrong length with the correct data you're going to run into an error so we must make sure that this length is the exact one from the client or vice versa of course we're gonna need to seek to the beginning of the object and yeah the decrypt stream method is kinda the same we input the encrypted content first and then this will be the decrypted content the password needs to be the same buffer size needs to be the same and the only additional argument is the length alright once we decrypt it we still need to get the value decode it to ascii and convert it into a string all right and you can see that the rest of the main loop is exactly the same as the previous script 
with the difference that we're invoking the decrypt data and the encrypt data whereas before we would be sending plain text now if we go ahead and take a look at the client code it's kind of the same thing uh, all of this is the same as before and here we have the same exact functions and down here this is the same code as before as well same thing we're basically inputting the decrypt data function and the encrypt data function where it is appropriate now the only difference you're gonna notice is on the encrypt data function here we have this line of code which is uh, where I'll be continuing to program the script and basically this line of code here is preventing us from outputting any command that is over 800 bytes of data and the reason for that is those commands will along with the padding from the pi aes script function they will go over the buffer size so that's gonna crash the encrypting method and return an error so yeah that's basically the entirety of the script now let's jump into another demo and then we'll check Wireshark for the encrypted traffic all right let's do another quick demo here run the server now let me run the client again there we go here is the Wireshark traffic you can see the only visible traffic is the created by pi aes script header all the rest of it is fully encrypted and let me do some commands here and we'll get some more traffic so we can verify that echo and yeah there we go everything is encrypted they're only going to be getting the header with the version from the encryption library over there now let me show you the little issue we still have on the script in regards to encryption so if you run any command that's less than 1024 bytes you're good you're not gonna have any issues but once you start running see if you run any command that the output is longer than 1024 bytes we're returning command output too long and that's in order to avoid crashing the function now I already put a hint about this on a previous video that I released yesterday entitled encrypted data over the network I'll put the card above here so if you're eager to get this working I don't have enough time at this moment to implement it but I will be fixing this and putting the updated function in the next few days so yeah that's basically it for today you can see that everything else uh, works properly the only issue is not outputting anything that's over 1024 bytes but that's it for now and I'll see you guys next time